Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, and 12. Cranial nerve 9, the glossopharyngeal nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve emerges from the brain stem, the medulla, location of nerve cell bodies. Somatic motor and visceral motor presynaptic is located in the medulla. Visceral motor postsynaptic is located in the optic ganglion. Visceral sensory is located in the superior ganglion. Special sensory and somatic sensory is located in the inferior ganglion. Nuclei. Four nuclei send or receive fibers via cranial nerve 9. They are all located in the medulla. There are two motor nuclei, the nucleus ambiguous, also shared by cranial nerve 10, and the inferior salivary nucleus. There are two sensory nuclei, the sensory nuclei of the trigeminal nerve and nuclei of the solitary tract. Both are also shared with cranial nerve 10. Cranial nerve 9 exits via the jugular foramen from the cranium. Course of cranial nerve 9. Cranial nerve 9 emerges from the lateral aspect of the medulla oblongata. It passes anterior laterally to leave the cranium through the jugular foramen. Cranial nerve 9 then sends its motor supply to the stylopharynges and then passes between the superior and middle pharyngeal constrictor muscles. It reaches the oropharynx and tongue and contributes sensory fibers to the pharyngeal plexus of nerves. Cranial nerve 9 consists of motor and sensory components. Cranial nerve 9 is distributed to derivatives of the third pharyngeal arch. Main actions of cranial nerve 9 Somatic motor to stylopharynges that assist swallowing. Visceral motor innervation or parasympathetic innervation to the parotid gland. Cranial nerve 9 sends presynaptic parasympathetic secretomotor fibers to the otic ganglion via a convoluted route involving the tympanic nerve, tympanic plexus, and lesser petrosal nerve. Postsynaptic fibers pass from the otic ganglion to the parotid gland via the auriculotemporal nerve, a branch of cranial nerve V3. Cranial nerve 9 receives visceral sensory input from the carotid body via the carotid sinus nerve. The carotid body is a chemoreceptor sensitive to blood oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. Unlike the aortic bodies, the carotid bodies also respond to changes in pH. Cranial nerve 9 receives visceral sensory input from carotid sinus via the carotid sinus nerve. The carotid sinus is a baroreceptor sensitive to changes in blood pressure. Cranial nerve 9 receives taste sensation from the posterior one-third of the tongue via nerve fibers that reaches the sensory inferior ganglia of cranial nerve 9. Cranial nerve 9 receives somatic sensory input, cutaneous sensation from the skin of the external ear and auditory canal. This blends with the territory supplied by the vagus nerve. Internal surface of the tympanic membrane, mucosa of the tympanic cavity and the eustachian tube via the tympanic plexus, the posterior third of the tongue, soft palate, pharyngeal mucosa and tonsils via the pharyngeal, tonsillar and lingual nerves. These are efferent fibers for the gag reflex. Testing of cranial nerve 9 Cranial nerve 9 is tested in common with the vagus nerve as they have similar functions and work together to control the pharynx, larynx and swallowing. Testing of the pharynx The patient is asked to open their mouth, inspect the uvula, Note any deviation to one side, use a tongue depressor if necessary. Then ask the patient to say ah and inspect the uvula. It should move upwards centrally. Note any deviation to one side. Testing of the gag reflex. This is unpleasant for the patient. The gag reflex should only be tested if a cranial nerve 9 or 10 lesion is suspected. Efferent signals for the gag reflex is transmitted via cranial nerve 9. Efferent signals for the gag reflex is transmitted via cranial nerve 10. The patient is first asked to open their mouth. The posterior pharyngeal wall is then gently touched on each side with a tongue depressor or a sterile stick and the uvula is inspected. Normally, it should lift up. Ask the patient if they felt the two touches and whether there was any difference in sensation. Findings If the uvula moves to one side, there is a cranial nerve 10 lesion on the opposite side. If there is no movement of the uvula, this is due to muscle paresis. If the uvula moves when the patient says ah, but not during gag reflex, with reduced pharyngeal sensation, there is cranial nerve 9 palsy.
Testing of the larynx. The patient is asked to cough and the character of the cough is assessed. The patient is asked to speak. Note the volume, quality and whether the patient's voice appear to fatigue. The patient is asked to swallow. Offer the patient a teaspoon of water to swallow, repeat three times, a sip of water to swallow, repeat three times, and a glass for a mouthful of water and repeat three times. Stop the test at the first sign of patient aspiration. At each stage of swallowing, watch the swallowing action. Does it consist of two phases or one smooth movement? Was there any delay between the fluid leaving the mouth, the oral phase, and the pharynx larynx reacting, the pharyngeal phase? Was there any coughing or choking or wet voice? Findings If there is a gradual onset of a deliberate cough, there is vocal cord palsy. If there is a wet bubbly voice, and cough before the swallow test, there is pharyngeal and vocal cord palsy or cranial nerve 10 palsy. When there is poor swallow and aspiration, there is combined cranial nerve 9 and 10 or lone cranial nerve 10 lesion. The vagus nerve cranial nerve 10. The vagus nerve emerges from the medulla of the brain stem. Location of nerve cell bodies. Somatic motor and visceral motor presynaptic are located in the medulla. Visceral motor postsynaptic nerve cell bodies are located in, on, or near viscera. Visceral sensory and special sensory are located in the inferior ganglion. Somatic sensory are located in the superior ganglion. The superior ganglion is located in the jugular foramen. In this region, there are also connections to cranial nerve 9 and the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. Nuclei. There are two motor and two sensory nuclei for cranial nerve 10. The two motor nuclei are the nucleus ambiguous and dorsal vagal nucleus. The two sensory nuclei are the sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and nuclei of the solitary tract. Somatic motor supply arises from the nucleus ambiguous. Visceral motor parasympathetic supply arises from the dorsal vagal nucleus. Somatic sensory input inputs into the sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. Taste and visceral sensory input is transmitted to the nuclei of the solitary tract. Cranial nerve 10 exits the cranium via the jugular foramen. Pause of cranial nerve 10. Of all the cranial nerves, the vagus nerve has the longest course and most extensive distribution. Most of cranial nerve 10's distribution is outside and inferior to the head. Vagus is derived from the Latin word vagary, which means wandering. Cranial nerve 10 arises from the lateral aspect of the medulla and then leaves the cranium through the jugular foramen. Cranial nerve 10 is positioned between cranial nerve 9 and 11 in the jugular foramen. Divisions of the cranial nerve 10 includes the cranial part, cervical part, thoracic part, and abdominal part. The cranial division. The vagus nerve arises by a series of rootlets from the medulla. This includes the traditional cranial root of cranial nerve 11. Branches at the cranial division includes the meningeal branch to dura mater, which is sensory, and has fibers of C2 spinal ganglion neurons that courses along with cranial nerve 10. Another branch is the auricular branch. The cervical division. The vagus nerve exits the cranium and enters the neck via the jugular foramen, Right and left cranial nerve 10 enter the carotid sheath and continue to reach the root of the neck. Branches here include the pharyngeal branch to the pharyngeal plexus, this is motor, the superior laryngeal nerve which divides into the internal laryngeal nerve which is sensory and the external laryngeal nerve which is motor. Cervical cardiac branches which are parasympathetic visceral efferent and the right recurrent laryngeal nerve which is sensory and motor. The thoracic division. Cranial nerve 10 enters the thorax through the superior thoracic aperture. The course of cranial nerve 10 is asymmetrical in the thorax. This is due to the rotation of the midgut during development. Anterior and posterior vagal trunks are formed, with the left cranial nerve 10 contributing to the anterior esophageal plexus and the right cranial nerve 10 contributing to the posterior esophageal plexus. Branches here includes the left recurrent laryngeal nerve which is sensory and motor, the thoracic cardiac branches, pulmonary branches, and esophageal plexus.
All distal branches convey parasympathetic and visceral efferent fibers for reflex stimuli. The abdominal division. Anterior and posterior vagal trunks, which are continuations of the esophageal plexus, enter the abdomen through the esophageal hiatus in the diaphragm. These trunks are also joined by branches of the sympathetic trunks. Branches of the abdominal division include the esophageal, gastric, hepatic, celiac, pyloric, renal and intestinal branches up to the left colic flexion. All branches convey parasympathetic and visceral efferent fibers for reflex stimuli. Cranial nerve 10 fibers are usually mixed. Cranial nerve 10 supplies the derivatives of the fourth pharyngeal arch. Main actions of the vagus nerve. Somatic motor supply. Motor to muscles of the pharynx except for the stylopharynges which is innervated by cranial nerve 9. Intrinsic muscles of the larynx. The recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies all intrinsic muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid muscle. The cricothyroid muscle is supplied by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. Muscles of the palate except for tensor villi palatini. Somatic motor supply to the striated muscle in the superior two-thirds of the esophagus. Visceral motor. Parasympathetic innervation to the smooth muscle and glands of the trachea, bronchi and digestive tract, nodes of the conduction system of the heart, coronary arteries. Visceral sensory, from the base of the tongue, the pharynx, the larynx. The sensory innervation of the larynx is via branches of the vagus nerve, the superior laryngeal nerve, internal and external branches and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The internal branch of the superior laryngeal nerve also known as the internal laryngeal nerve, innervates the inferior surface of the epiglottis and the supraglottic region as far as the mucous membrane above the vocal cords. The recurrent laryngeal nerve provides the sensory supply to the laryngeal mucosa below the vocal cords. Cranial nerve 10 also receives visceral sensory information from the trachea, bronchi, the heart, the aorta, from the barrel receptors at the aortic arch, and the chemoreceptors at the paraaortic body, the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines up to the left colic flexion. The vagus nerve receives taste sensation from the epiglottis and palate. Cranial nerve 10 also receives somatic sensory information from the auricle, the external acoustic meatus, and the dura mater of the posterior cranial fossa. Testing of the vagus nerve kindly refer to testing of cranial nerve 9 as cranial nerve 9 and 10 are usually tested together. Next, we move on to the accessory nerve, cranial nerve 11. Cranial nerve 11 emerges from the superior spinal cord. Their nerve cell bodies are located in the medulla and the spinal cord. The nucleus of the spinal accessory nerve is a column of anterior horn motor neurons in the superior 5 or 6 cervical segments of the spinal cord. Course of the accessory nerve There is the cranial part and the spinal part. This cranial root of the accessory nerve has been classified as being part of the vagus nerve rather than the accessory nerve, but it shall be discussed here. The cranial accessory nerve arises from the nucleus ambiguous in the medulla, the cranial portion joins with the vagus nerve. These fibers form the radix cranialis of the accessory nerve, which pass to the vagus nerve to be distributed by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. They then innervate all laryngeal muscles except the cricothyroid. This cranial part may be united for a short distance with the spinal accessory nerve. The spinal part. Fibers arise from the lateral part of the superior spinal cord, C1 to C5 or 6, as a series of rootlets. These fibers join together and ascend adjacent to the spinal cord, passing through the foramen magnum to join with the cranial portion of the accessory nerve. It finally leaves the skull via the jugular foramen and travels to the muscles of the neck and back. Cranial nerve 11 descends along the internal carotid artery, and innervates the sternocleidomastoids and the upper fibers of the trapezi. Nerve fibers from the cervical plexus convey sensory fibers from the spinal nerves C2 to C4 that join cranial nerve 11 in the posterior neck to provide pain and proprioceptive fibers to the sternocleidomastoids and the trapezi.
which cerebral hemisphere controls the ipsilateral sternocleidomastoid and the contralateral trapezius. The fibers in cranial nerve 11 consist of somatic motor fibers. Although this nerve is purely motor as it leaves the CNS, it gains pain and proprioceptive fibers from the cervical plexus in the lateral cervical region of the neck. General distribution of the accessory nerve is to the superficial layer of the neck. Main action of accessory nerve is somatic motor supply to the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius. Testing of the accessory nerve The cranial portion of the accessory nerve cannot be tested separately. The spinal portion of the accessory nerve can be tested. First, inspect for abnormal head position. Inspect the sternocleidomastoids for wasting, fasciculation or hypertrophy. Testing of muscle power. Ask the patient to shrug their shoulders and observe. Ask the patient to shrug again and apply your hands on their shoulder to provide resistance. Ask the patient to turn their head to each side, first without and then with resistance by applying your hand on their cheek. The action of the sternocleidomastoid is to turn the head to the opposite side. Poor head turning to the right indicates a weak left sternocleidomastoid and vice versa. Findings Accessory nerve lesions usually present as part of a wider weakness or neurological syndrome rather than an isolated pathology. When there is bilateral weakness and wasting, this is caused by muscular pathology or motor neuron disease. When there is unilateral weakness of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid on the same side, this suggests a peripheral neurological lesion. When there is unilateral weakness of the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid of opposite sides, this usually occurs with hemiplegia and suggests an upper motor neuron lesion ipsilateral to the weak sternocleidomastoid. Cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal nerve. The hypoglossal nerve arises from the medulla. Its nerve cell bodies are located in the medulla. Its nucleus lies just beneath the rhomboid fossa of the medulla oblongata and raises the floor of the fossa to form the hypoglossal trigon. It exits the cranium via the hypoglossal canal. Course of the cranial nerve 12. Nucleus of cranial nerve 12 lies on the floor of the fourth ventricle. Its fibers pass ventrally as a purely motor nerve by several rootlets from the medulla, leaving the brain stem lateral to the pyramidal tracts. It then leaves the skull via the hypoglossal foramen to reach the tongue. Cranial nerve 12 passes inferiorly and medial to the angle of the mandible. It then curves anteriorly to enter the tongue. After exiting the cranial cavity, cranial nerve 12 is joined by a branch or branches of the cervical plexus that conveys general somatic motor fibers from C1 and C2 spinal nerves and somatic general sensory fibers from the spinal ganglion of C2. These spinal nerve fibers reach the hyoid muscles, with some of the sensory fibers passing retrograde along it to reach the dura mater of the posterior cranial fossa. Branches include the meningeal branch, the superior root of the ansa cervicalis, and the lingual branches. The meningeal branch returns to the cranium through the hypoglossal canal. It innervates the dura mater on the floor and posterior wall of the posterior cranial fossa. The nerve fibers conveyed are from the sensory spinal ganglion of spinal nerve C2 and are not hypoglossal fibers. The superior root of the ansa cervicalis supply the infrahyoid muscles, sternohyoid, sternothyroid, and omohyoid. They convey only fibers from the cervical plexus, the loop between the anterior rami of C1 and C2, that join the nerve outside the cranial cavity but not the hypoglossal fibers. Some nerve fibers continue past the origin of the superior root to reach the tyrohyoid muscle. The lingual branches supply the styloglossus, hyoglossus, genioglossus, and intrinsic muscles of the tongue. Cranial nerve 12 consists of somatic motor fibers and are distributed to the muscles of the tongue. Main action is motor supply to the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue except for the palatoglossus, which is actually a palatine muscle supplied by cranial nerve 10. Testing of the hypoglossal nerve. The patient is asked to open his or her mouth, inspect the tongue on the floor of the mouth for wasting and fasciculations. Then the patient is asked to protrude the tongue and inspect
for deviation to one side and abnormal movements. Rippling movements may be seen if the tongue is held protruded for long periods, which is normal and should not be mistaken for fasciculation. To assess for tongue weakness, ask the patient to move the tongue in and out repeatedly and then side to side. Place your finger on the patient's cheek and ask them to push against it from the inside using their tongue. Clinical findings. When there is a lower motor neuron lesion, there is fasciculation on the affected side. Deviation towards the affected side on protrusion. The tongue deviates towards the side of the lesion when protruded because of the relative dominance of the healthy genioglossus. There is weakness on pressing the tongue away from the affected side. When there is a unilateral upper motor neuron lesion, there is rarely any clinical obvious signs. When there is bilateral upper motor neuron lesion, a small globally weak tongue is present with reduced movements. When there is bilateral lower motor neuron lesion, there is a small and weak tongue. Trombone tremor occurs when there is rapid in and out movement on protrusion of the tongue. Causes for trombone tremor include cerebellar disease, extra pyramidal syndromes, essential tremor, etc. These are my references. Thank you.